Hello children, welcome to AIMS India online classes. This is biology session. You are watching sixth class biology, living and non-living things. You know very well children, we come across different things in our day to day life. For example, a chair, table, stone or a coin. We know that they are not alive. Similarly, we do know that we are alive and um, so are the people of the world. We also see animals around us that are so full of life like uh, dogs, cats, monkeys, squirrels, insects and many others. So this is the common thing which we will see every day. So here also here see this is a uh, footwear, a toy, okay here a flower, bat, snake, squirrel, rugby ball, a plant, an ant, fish, parachute, caterpillar, frog. Some of them are living and some of them are non-living. So in this lesson, we are going to discuss in deep about living and uh, non-living things. Are you ready children? So let us go for part one of the lesson. Living and uh, non-living things. So all living things differ from non-living things in many ways. How? Let us see some of the important characteristic features which made them to differ from non-living things. Cellular organization. The first one, cellular organization, nutrition, respiration, growth, excretion, reproduction, movement and response to stimuli and a life cycle. So, what are these? These are the characteristic features. In which organisms you find it? In which things you will see all these characteristics? Obviously, living things, isn't it? Some of these characteristics can be found in certain non-living things, but not all. Okay? So, characteristics of living things, defining a living thing is a difficult proposition as is defining life. So, that property possessed by living things, life is the important property possessed by living things. So, however, a living thing possess certain properties that help define what is life, what life is. Okay, children. So, let us uh, study one by one. Complex organization, the name itself is indicating complex organization. Living things have a level of complexity and organization not found in non-living things or lifeless, lifeless objects. At its most fundamental level, a living thing is composed of one or more cells. Okay? The beginning of the living organism or the life starts with a single cell. So, these units generally too small units means here cells they are too small or very small to be seen with the naked eye they are organized means combined to form tissues okay the fundamental unit of living organism is cell these cells are organized into tissues 
then uh, a tissue is a series of cells or group of cells that accomplish a shared function means a specific function. The tissues in turn means tissues combined form organs such as stomach, kidneys, liver, lungs, etcetera. Okay? The cells combine to form the tissues, tissues combine to form the organs. So, a number of organs working together compose an organ system. Okay? The several organs combine to form an organ system. For example, if you take a digestive system, what are the organs present in the digestive system? Mouth, that means teeth, okay? food pipe, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, okay? anus and some digestive glands like uh, salivary glands, pancreas, liver, intestinal glands, etc. They all together will form the a specific system. What is that called? A digestive system and it, form, it performs which function? Digestion function. So, a number of organs working together compose an organ system. So, there are different organ systems are present in the body. An organism is a complex series of various organ systems. So, that is why in living organisms, the organization is a complex process. Okay? So, cells combine to form tissues, tissues combine to form organs, organs combine to form organ systems, organ systems combine to form a organism. Okay, children, let us proceed. Metabolism, it is another important characteristic feature of living organisms. What is metabolism? The living things exhibit a rapid turnover of chemical materials, which is referred to as metabolism. Okay? In order to undergo the process of digestion, it has to undergo some chemical reactions. Okay? So, the metabolism means it is um, chemical materials which are involved okay, to run the live activities, okay, activities of living organisms. So, it occur through metabolism like digestion is a metabolism, respiration is a metabolism, excretion is a metabolism. So, different organ systems will perform their own activities. The metabolism involves exchanges of chemical matter with the external environment and extensive transformations of organic matter within the cells of a living organism. Okay? The metabolism process takes place in the cells. Cell is the unit of living organism. In every cell, this metabolic activities occur. The metabolism generally involves the release or use of chemical energy. Okay? Either energy may be released or it may be used. What is that energy? Chemical energy. This chemical energy will be represented in the form of ATP. You will learn this in your higher classes. ATP is the metabolic energy or chemical energy or energy currency in the living system, whether it is a plant, animal or any living organism, the energy is produced in the form of ATP. So, non-living things, if you compare, they do not display this metabolism, there is no metabolism. Okay? The next characteristic feature of living organism is responsiveness. Responsiveness. All living things are able to respond to stimuli, to stimuli in the external environment. Okay, what is a stimuli? A stimuli means uh, it may be anything which bring out response in the living organism. 
okay it may be a light it may be a heat it may be or any object or a thing which bring out any response then it is called a stimuli okay stimuli means plural stimulus means singular light is a stimulus heat is a stimulus cool is a stimulus okay sharp object it is a stimulus and what is the response response means when you touch a hot object you remove your hand that is the response okay that responsiveness is the characteristic feature of a living organisms okay children for example living things respond to changes in light heat sound and chemical and mechanical contacts living things respond to changes in the environment it may be the light heat sound or any chemical or mechanical contact next characteristic uh, this responsiveness to detect the stimuli the organism has means of uh, receiving information so such as sense organs okay so how do these living organisms uh, receive the stimuli or detect the stimuli they detect the stimuli with the help of uh, sense organs okay it may be through vision through eyes or it may be auditory through ears listening or it may be through taste tongue or it may be through smell olfactory okay so or it may be through touch skin so these sense organs help in detecting the stimuli to respond effectively to changes in the environment an organism must coordinate its responses so what do organisms do they coordinate the responses okay after seeing then that response will uh, uh, that stimuli go to the brain through sense organs and react accordingly and the different organs will respond so coordination process takes place a system of nerves and a number of chemical regulators what do you call these chemical regulators hormones they coordinate activities within an organism okay it is the nervous system which coordinate all the activities within an organism the organism responds to the stimuli by means of a number of effectors effectors means the organs which respond such as muscles and glands okay the organism respond to the stimuli by means of number of effectors such as muscles and uh, glands so energy is generally used in the process so this responsiveness or respond to the stimuli is a energy consuming process so organisms change their behavior in response to the changes in the surrounding environment so they change their behavior okay sometimes uh, they can uh, withdraw the organ sometimes they will run away from the uh, stimuli okay so the response depends upon for example when you are listening to a uh, music which is pleasant your responsiveness is different or when you listen to a harsh sound like some disturbance you will isn't it you will uh, experience so response is generated according to the stimuli okay organism respond accordingly to the stimuli for example an organism may move in response to its environment okay sometimes you may have observed some birds will migrate during winter season okay to where where it is warm somewhat okay so my some animals will migrate in response to the change in the environmental conditions okay so that is called migration so next uh, responses such as this occurs in definite patterns and make up the behavior of an organism the behavior is very active 
it is not passive it is active because it uses energy and uh, an animal responding to a stimulus is different from a stone or a non living thing which is rolling down from a hill ok. There is a difference in the response. So, the living things display responsiveness, but whereas non living things do not. Another important characteristic feature growth. Living organisms show growth. The growth requires an organism to take in material from the environment and organize the material into its own structures. The growth may be uh, defined, it may be an increase in the size of the organism, it is a physical definition. Okay. How the size increases? By adding the materials. So, to accomplish growth, an organism expends some of the energy it acquires during the metabolism, okay. means it spends some energy which is produced during the metabolism for which purpose for the purpose of growth ok. An organism has a pattern for accomplishing the building of growth structures, it follows certain pattern, it follows certain um, path ok. So, during which uh, it utilizes the energy which is producing uh, produced uh, in the metabolism ok. So, this growth or during the growth a living organisms transforms the material that is unlike itself into materials that are like it ok means the transformation of materials takes place. So, just like cell first they come converted into the tissue means cells divide and form the tissues these tissues combine to form the organs. So, the structure is transformation is taking place, individual cells its size is different, the tissue group of cells size increases, ok it become the organ change transformation, ok a person for example, digests a meal of meat and vegetables and it transforms the chemical material into more of himself or herself ok. The food which we are eating ok it may a vegetable or a non veget. So, that after digestion what happen it is assimilated it is absorbed into the cells ok and it is converted into the tissue it is converted into the chemical material to more of our body cells is not it. So, that is why a growing child for example, you people require more proteins, how these proteins are available? The proteins are available through the food which we eat, do you agree? Yes. So, for example, a non living organism does not uh, display this characteristic of growth. Growth is the unique feature of living organisms, living organisms show growth. Next, another important characteristic feature of living organism reproduction. A living thing has the ability to produce copies of itself by the process known as reproduction. So, these copies are made while the organism is still living. So, among the plants and simple animals reproduction is often an extension of the growth process ok. So, every living organism for example, a plant a tree is there before that uh, tree going to perish from the earth several uh, baby plants are produced they produce the seeds those seeds germinate to form the different plants of its own kind is not it. So, if you take a dog puppies, if you take a cat kittens ok, if you take a hen chicks like that the reproduction is a process which uh, it is an ability to produce the copies of 
itself okay right it is the characteristic feature of, but non living things don't has this uh, ability of reproduction so more complex organisms engage in a type of reproduction called sexual reproduction in which uh, the two parents contribute to the formation of a new individual so during this process a combination of triads can be produced okay male and female organisms are involved it's a complex process but asexual reproduction is a kind of reproduction which involves only one parent okay and the resulting cells are generally they are identical to the parent cell for example if you take a sexual reproduction a bacteria it is a unicellular organism the bacteria grow and quickly reach the maturity after which uh, they split into two organisms by a process of uh, binary fission a kind of a sexual reproduction dividing the one cell into two it is called a binary fission it is a asexual reproduction here only one organism is involved whereas sexual reproduction involves two parents male and female but here only one parent is involved in the asexual reproduction the next uh, evolution so living organisms they have the ability to adapt to their uh, environment through the process of evolution so during this evolution the changes occur in populations and the organisms in the population become better able to metabolize respond and reproduce okay so this evolution process a lot of changes so what is an adaptation evolution involves the adaptation of organisms during the adaptations new characteristics are developed in the organisms those characteristics are passed to the generations next population okay so this evolution process helps the population to become better and able to metabolize respond and reproduce or it helps in the survival of the organisms okay and um, organisms develop the abilities to cope with their environment that their ancestors did not have okay so during this process of evolution some uh, abilities are developed which are not present in their ancestors okay previous populations evolution also results in a greater variety of organisms than they existed in the previous eras means more adapted organisms are produced by evolution so this proliferation of populations of organisms is uh, the unique characteristic feature or it is a unique to living things okay next uh, ecology so the environment influences the living organisms that it surrounds definitely the ecology is the study of relationships between the organisms and their relationships with their environment so it is a subject it is one of the science which deals with the relationships between the organisms and their surroundings okay so it involves ecological studies involves both biotic factors that is living things and abiotic factors means non living things okay so both these factors can alter the environment okay children i hope i hope you understood thank you for watching our video